I'm seeing a very interesting dynamic in AI that I don't always see in software. And that is that, you know, typically there's going to be a whole bunch of small startups that come out and do, you know, solve some specific problem. They're very nimble, very quick. And then you get a lot of the big players that try to either acquire them or, you know, copy them if they're incredibly popular. Um, something that I'm seeing right now in AI is a little bit of a reverse of this where you have, you know, a big player right now because those are the people that actually have the money to get some of this AI tech built um, coming out with a big product. And then you have a lot of smaller companies doing different variations of this at a smaller level, but trying to compete. And it's kind of interesting because with my own startup, um, AI Box, you know, I remember talking to a number of venture capitalists over the last uh, month or so. And, you know, a lot of them had the question, you know, you know, this is a great idea. We think this is going to be successful. But like, what if Google comes out and does the same thing? Like, you know, what are your defenses against that? Yada, yada. And we kind of had to have that discussion. So it's kind of interesting. That is more like traditional. That's more what I expect to hear. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, startup founders, I think, get that question a lot. It's like, oh, yeah, great idea. But what if Microsoft? What if Amazon? What if Google does it? But it's interesting because Today, I want to talk about a startup that is doing the reverse of that. So this is Tabby ML. They're an open source challenger to GitHub's Copilot. So essentially, you know, the big, huge behemoth in the room, which is, you know, Microsoft and GitHub, one of their subsidiaries, has built a very popular tool, GitHub Copilot. Um, and now we're having a lot of smaller players come into the space and try to do it better, try to do it quicker, try to add more features. Um, and so I think this is kind of interesting reversal of roles here. So Tabby ML has just raised $2.3 million in seed funding today on the podcast. I'm going to talk about everything they're doing there, um, how they are planning on competing, and really um, why I think this is an important player in the AI space. So let's dive into it. Welcome to the world's number one AI podcast, AI Chat. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Make sure that you go to AIbox.ai, link in the show notes, to join the waitlist for our new AI platform. We're going to be launching an incredible platform that allows you to build anything you want with workflows um, in AI. So you're able to chain together chat GPT and image generators and audio generators to make really powerful apps for your organization, or you can host them on our marketplace and actually generate royalties from them. So make sure to go to AIbox.ai and join the waitlist for in addition, if you like the podcast, if you could do me a massive favor and please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps me be able to get better guests on here as they check the reviews to see how you guys are liking it. So if you could please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, Interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. The AI-assisted code generation sphere is experiencing a burst of competition and startup Tabby ML, which is the brainchild of former Google employees, is making waves. Recently, the startup secured, um, as I mentioned, over $3 million, $3.2 million in seed funding to kind of further enhance its open source code generator. So differentiating from GitHub's Copilot, Tabby ML offers a kind of unique proposition as a self-hosted coding assistant. So Men Zhang, one of the co-founders, emphasized the tool's robust customization capabilities, saying, quote, We foresee a landscape where the customization in software development will be a predominant need for all businesses. Um, I think while proprietary software solutions may have matured, um, when juxtaposed with GitHub's OpenAI-fueled tool, Open source solutions like Tabby ML kind of stand out. So according to Zhang, he believes that they stand out a lot. Um, this is particularly evident in larger enterprise settings. Lucy Gao, Zhang's co-founder, pointed out how engineers in these environments often utilize proprietary code. And this makes tools like Copilot less effective, whereas open source solutions like Tabby ML can actually kind of thrive. So Gao illustrates this with a bit of a straightforward example, saying, quote, if an employee pens a code line, I can seamlessly pull it using Tabby ML. However, as with many AI innovations, code generators can have their shortcomings. So sometimes delivering buggy outputs, Gao however sees this challenge as a as fairly manageable for self-hosted platforms like theirs. 
Um, as users make alterations to Tabby ML's auto suggestions or dismiss them, the tool learns and actually improves. So if it's saying like, hey, here's a great bit of code for what you're working on and you say, no, that's not relevant, it's actually going to learn from that um, and get better, which I think is very interesting. So the primary objective of these AI-driven code generators isn't to you know necessarily um, oust human programmers, but to kind of complement their efforts. For now, I'm sure in the future, these things will be able to just completely automate a lot of these tasks and oust them. It's kind of funny. A lot of people talk about the fact that AI is not going to replace everyone's jobs. It's just going to help, you know, people that like augment everything you're doing. Well, yeah, but also I feel like it's going to replace a, a lot of jobs. And if you don't, if you're not really uh, aware of that, or if you're not willing to admit that, then it's going to just be more disruptive when it actually happens. So I think in any case, a recent survey by GitHub highlighted that Copilot's recommendations were accepted by users at a 30% rate. So further, Zhang kind of spotlighted an intriguing, uh, you know, statistic from a Google developer gathering. Nearly a quarter of the tech giant software engineers and encountered over five assistive um, instances daily via its AI-enhanced internal code editor, which is called Cider. So launched just a few years ago, TabbyML has already gained, I think, some solid attention. They have over 11,000 GitHub stars. Um, and, you know, one of the partners and ZooCap have been identified as the primary investors in this funding round. Actually, I think that was Young Key Partners and ZooCap. Um, and I think addressing this kind of looming competition with the behemoth uh, co-pilot, of course, where the big showdown is going to happen. Yang speculates that OpenAI's advantage might start to slip as AI models evolve and the expanses um, and all the expenses kind of associated with computing power decline. So currently GitHub and OpenAI's edge um, kind of comes from their ability to roll out AI, AI models hosting tens of billions of parameters via cloud networks. Although there are, you know, costs to deploying such large models, Copilot has ingeniously balance this out to some extent by you know batching requests so you know regardless of that i think the tactic has its limitations microsoft reportedly bled over 20 dollars per github copilot user monthly in the initial months of this year as disclosed by the wall street journal so definitely not profitable and costing them a ton of money i think in contrast to that tabby's strategy is to reduce development hurdles by um, endorsing models that train on one to three billion parameters so while this may compromise quality in the interim, Zhang is fairly optimistic about this and says, quote, as computing power becomes more affordable and open source models elevate in caliber, GitHub and OpenAI's competitive advantage is bound to ebb. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if he's right about this or not. Definitely a very interesting area to watch. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.